Hello everybody, it's Karen. I'm glad you came by today. I've got a few examples today of a card made using this Stadium Wave card. Now I have modified it again slightly. <laughs> so you can see there the one at the back was taller and I've adapted this one, changed it a little bit to make it shorter. And so you, I think you can see the difference there. Now, I've also changed it so the, the cards today, most of them will orient from the left side over to the right. So you'll see that in a little bit here. So the shorter tabs are using a 4 by 7 inch piece of acetate, whereas the longer ones were an 8 inch by 4 inches. Uh, and I've changed where they get scored a little bit. So the reason I did that is because I was trying to use these gnomes uh, from Paper Row Studio. Now, they will fit in the shorter tabs and not poke out, but you'll see here, if I put them in the taller tabs, they will not. So you may have images that are bigger that you want to put them on a shorter tab. So just take a screenshot of that if you want, and I'll go through it all with you anyway. So I've got my piece of acetate, which is four inches by seven inches. And along that seven inch side, I'm using an embossing stylus to score at a half an inch one and a quarter inches, the two inches, and then it'll be the four and a half inches. And this is going to give us all those tabs that we need for that whole mechanism. So by scoring them all together, it just saves a whole lot of steps. So there you can see where those little creases are, hopefully. And now to fold those, the first one is a mountain fold. So I just sort of find that score line and fold along it. And you want to really make sure you burnish all of these, these lines. Now I find it easier to go jump right to the third fold because the middle one is going to be a valley fold, but the first and third are both mountain folds. So I'm going to fold this again into a mountain fold and just sort of get it pinched up and the top, those edges, side edges should all line up. So just give it a good press. And then what I find easiest to do is I take that first fold and bring it back to the fold we just did that second step there. So I'm folding it right back so they line up. And then you can burnish that. And so now you've done a valley fold in between the two mountain folds. And just because the acetate's a little, you know, it moves around and it wiggles and it slides, I just find that easier to do it that way. So it should sort of have that start to an M shape or a V, I guess. And then the last fold, we're going to just fold that right over. Now the, those edges will again line up at the bottom there under my left hand. And so then once you've got those all lined up and the side edges line up, you can just press it down. And that's the hardest part, honestly, of this whole thing, I think. So I'm going to put some red line tape now right along that first flap that we made. And then we're going to stick, take that off and stick that right down. So this is going to be all of the little tabs. So here you can see I've got it in my cutter, my trimmer, and I've, I, it's right at the four inch mark. If I just move that over a half an inch and cut it there, I will have a half inch tab. And so I just went through the whole piece of acetate making these tabs. And that's how they look when they come out. Now, you have a choice here. If you put tape on the left side and line them up that way, if it's on the left, your whole mechanism is going to go off to the left. If you put the tape on the right side, the mechanism will go to the right. So for these ones, mostly today, I did one example for you of it going to the left. But I am going to put the tape on the right side of each of these tabs. So just along that edge, so you can see they're all taped up there. Now I've put a piece of blue tape along one of the grid lines so I know that's where the top of my tabs will go. And this very first tab I've got lined up along the grid line and I've taped it down with that little piece of uh, blue tape on the side. Now you want to make sure that the red line tape is always on the right. I'm going to line this right up against that blue line, the top of it, and then one grid line over. So you're overlapping each of those tabs by half. So all I do is on the right side, I'm making sure it goes along that grid line and pressing it down into the red line tape. 
And then I always burnish it because I find that helps to make that red line tape disappear a little bit. So then you can remove that release paper. And this next tab will go halfway over this. Make sure the red line tape is facing up. And so all the folded edges are down at the bottom too is another way you can tell you're going the right way. So I'm lining it up with the top and lining it with that line on the right. And there you go. And then just give it a good press to make that red line tape disappear a little bit. And you repeat that with all the tabs till you have something that looks like this. And the last tab will still have that red line tape on the right side. And we want to keep it there. And then we'll flip it over. And on that first tab, we'll put some more red line tape on the right side of that one. So now both the first and the last one have the tape on them. They're quite springy. <laughs> So one is facing up and the other one, the tape is facing down. Now I just want to show you this. If you use red line tape versus these, this is that Sook Wang tape or Be Creative tape, you can see the red line tape is more invisible, I find, especially if you burnish it. So here's an example. The one on the right is that Be Creative or Sook Wang tape, and it's quite foggy where the tape is. You can use it. It will still work, but your mechanism will be a little bit more... Uh, messy looking I think. Okay so this is the inside of my card. You saw I had the front decorated. It's easiest if you have it. I've taken the release paper off that first tab on the left and I am lining it up so it's just a bit away from that fold line. You, you want to be sure that the card will fold. So I leave it just a small you know small tiny gap there. You can see that gap there. I've taken the release paper off the right side and you just fold the card over and it will pick it up exactly where it should be. And that's all there is to this mechanism. And so just burnish it to get rid of the tape marks. And then you get to decorate. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just starting to stick things down. Now I've made a few examples for you which I'll show you in a little bit. Here I'm showing you I've put the tape on the back of this no, I actually found in the end it's far easier to put the tape right onto those acetate tabs uh, because then you know it's not going to stick out because you don't want to stick your card down. But do check and make sure that your images, whatever you're using, do not stick out from the card. So there it is all finished. I've added all those gnomes and the little hearts and presents. And I added in that little love you uh die or sentiment so the first and the last one you can see I tend to stick those right onto the card because they're not going to stick up but all the other ones do they're really quite fun I'm sticking them to the back tab if you notice there uh, just because when you open the card from the front to back that's what you'll notice but at the beginning I do add a few hearts or whatever images I have to the both sides of those tabs because you will see that a bit more. So there it is. It's so fun, you guys. It's like you just want to keep opening that thing. Now, for each of my cards today, I did make a belly band. This one, I, the, I was using a scrap, but it was four inches, so I just cut it into two inches. And honestly, that's what I did with all of them. The finished length of this ended up being 16 inches, and my cards are 5 by 7 inch cards, so it's 7 across. Now I'm just sticking some hearts over that seam, and I'm lining this up on my card, my finished card. And I would always do this on the finished card, you guys. There's quite a bit of bulk with that mechanism. So I'm going to gently fold that right side around. I don't want it to be super tight and I don't want it to be loose. So you, <laughs> I can't really explain it better. You just need it to be slightly tight. Now here you can see that bulk that we get uh, at versus this, this other side, which is why I would always do this when it's finished. So I'm, I'm trying to keep that right side in place and I'm just gently trying to fold that around but snug enough that it's gonna hold it together. And then in the back, you can see where those uh, two, the right and left overlap. I'm sort of finding the center point of that. I'm just eyeballing it. But once I have it eyeballed, I can mark on the other edge. So now the top and the bottom edge have a pencil mark. And then I just transfer one of those pencil marks to wherever it ends up on this left-hand tab. 
And now it looks like I'm cutting through both sides. I'm not. I'm only cutting the left part, left fold here. And I cut from that pencil mark up to the middle and then flip it around and I cut from the bottom up to the middle on this one. So the other one on the right is top down. This is bottom up. And then those two tabs will fit together. And you'll have a belly band that you can open and close without it being glued shut. But it will also slide off. It's loose enough that it will slide off rather than having to open it all the time. So then I'm just gonna put it right back on the card and you'll see here it will fit and go together. It's a bit finicky at first, but there it is. And now I can finish decorating it. Now just be careful if you're putting any images on that extend past the belly band that you're not gluing it down to your card front. So I'm just putting glue in the middle of this little gnome. And then I added the sentiments and another few hearts on the left hand side just to balance it out a little bit. So there's the belly band. Now I can take it apart or I can just slide it off here. And that's the front of the card and there's the inside. So that's the whole finished card. Super fun. I, I really enjoyed these. They're not that hard to make quite honestly you guys. It's just making all those tabs. But what a fun card to receive. So I've made some more cards just to give you a bit of inspiration and a few more ideas of how you could use these. This one uses the Be Happy papers. Uh, and when you open it, all those little gnomes are there and the, the honey and the, the teapot and sunflowers. Now I did put panels on this one, uh, both on the front and inside. So that's another idea for you. You might want to try that if you've got papers that coordinate. And although I've used die cuts for my examples today, you could use uh, your stamps or dies and create images to go on these. Okay, now this is a wedding card. Um, it is smaller. I used the foiled papers and I had the six by six papers. So that is actually five by six inch card. Uh, I just used some glitter card to make the belly band uh, and some silver mirror card just to match the front. <laughs> And there's the inside. I'll link below um, to all the die cuts and dies that I've used today. But there um, I did cut out some hearts from the mirror card and just put a little, a uh, couple of strips on it. Here I've added that sentiment. Now I added a little acetic tab to that and I was thinking that could be really fun to have a bunch of sentiments popping up in between some images. So that may be something you want to give a try. Now, I hope it's not too early for a Christmas card, but here is one. <laughs> so uh, for this one now, I've had it open from the right side to the left. And so when I was putting the red line tape on each of the tabs, I put it on the left side of the tabs, not the right. And this is how it would end up opening. So if you're left-handed, you may find this far easier to do because it's much easier to write this way. The other thing to notice is I stamped that sentiment on and if you're going to put a stamp sentiment, I would definitely do that before you glue the mechanism down. So I hope I've given you some inspiration everyone. I hope you'll give this a try because these are so much fun to make and to give away. Thanks for stopping by. I hope everyone's having a great day. Mm -hmm.